Hello, this is One Man Left, and we finally have the 325 announcement for Settlers of the Cowgirl. We had the announcement stream today, we got to watch and see about the new league, and then we finally got patch notes for some of the balance changes. So, the league itself, I will say, looks amazing. I'm going to focus more on some of the, like, you know, game design balance choices, numbers, all that stuff. Uh, but the league mechanic itself looks very good. It looks entertaining. It's, you know, you got to build your town, manage your resources, build your base, hire your dudes, send them out, whatever. That type of system. Um, the graphics look amazing. But I'm going to mainly in this video focus on some of the balance changes, how they affect endgame, how they affect builds I play, mana builds, a couple other builds. If you're here looking for info on minion builds, there are probably other resources for you to watch. Go ahead. But I'm going to kind of summarize some of the major changes that are noteworthy, and I'm going to talk about those. So, I'm going to start things off, because these are the things people are curious about. If you're only going to watch the first two minutes of the video, this is probably what you want to know. We're going to go right in to Battle Mage's Cry. So, this is the first significant change. Battle Mage's Cry was removed from the game. It no longer exists. There's a gem called Battle Mage's Cry still. I don't know why they did this. Um, but, yeah, I guess just so they can fill the asset. But Battle Mage's Cry was removed from the game, which also means Mana Forged Arrow lost its percent damage. And it's a lot. You know, before it had four or 5,000 percent. Now you'd maybe get five or 600 percent. That's like an 88 percent nerf. So, despite Mana Four Zero being very, 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 very strong, it's still probably better than a lot of builds in the game, but very high investment. So, I'm probably not going to try to hit it with 50,000 volts and resurrect it right now. Maybe in a future patch, they'll add something else that immediately gives us our percent back and revives the build. I don't know. But for the time being, you know, we kind of had this experience last league. If you played Mana Four Zeros this league, congratulations, you played one of the strongest builds to ever exist in the game. You might have delved to 65,000 depth with it. You might have one-shot some Ubers, done, you know, there's a lot of things you could have done with it, but it was a very powerful build, and we're moving on now. So, once again, goodbye Mana Four Zeros. Maybe you'll be back. You've come back before. All right. Now, this does affect a couple other builds. Because a lot of the builds I play like to use Battle Mage's Cry because I like to get different ways to scale spell damage and sometimes turn that into attack damage. In Mjolnir, I use Battle Mage's Cry for Leech because you're using your Cyclone in Mjolnir to recover your mana with Leech to then fund your Arcane Cloak and cast from Channeling Spender Loop to then maintain your Indigon stacks and keep you at 16,000 spend for max 2,000% spell damage. So the, the Battle Mage's Cry, giving that 2,000% spell damage into cyclone damage to then leech more it's kind of a big deal so this is gone it's a bit of a loss for the mjolnir build but the, the thing is that's kind of nice here is if i look at cyclone um cyclone itself got nearly doubled in damage it's an 88 percent buff 111 effectiveness from 59 so i i played mjolnir a little bit at the start of this league without battle mage's cry before i decided to put that into the setup and it was not, it just wasn't enough leech, but it, it, like it was trying. I think if you just took that and doubled it, I think it'd be fine. So I think just the passive doubling of Cyclone's damage without having to rely on Battle Mage's Cry uh, will roughly cancel out the loss of Battle Mage's Cry. And so now you'll just gain back some gem sockets. So I, I think I think Cyclone for Mjolnir will now do enough damage effectiveness that unless you're doing like super high delirium with damage reduction to affect your leech, you should probably be fine for for, for leech on uh, on Mjolnir. Um, so as far as the mana builds that I play, mana four zeros. We're gonna we're gonna move on. Mjolnir, which is still a very strong build. You know, it's it's probably a six k del viable build, albeit it would struggle much harder. Um, is basically untouched. There's no other nerfs. There are no changes to the Archmage gem. There's no changes to Ball Lightning of Orbiting. No changes to Ivory Tower. 
No changes to Indigon. No changes to Coruscating Elixir. No change. Uh, no, nothing that makes it tick. Nothing else was effective. It is it is unchanged. So if you were comfortable with the power level of Mjolnir this league, and then next league we might be getting a little bit of borrowed power with some crazy weapon enchants we've seen, it'll be a pretty powerful build. Um, I, I There are a couple other Warcry changes. Uh, I would honestly say most Warcrys are weaker in general. A lot of them lost some special, some certain things like Enduring Cry lost the flat fizz there's there's a couple like balance implications of that but uh another an, as far as the war cry changes though another build i've been dabbling with that is insanely strong is the zenith juggernaut so to wrap up kind of the builds i was planning on playing and how they're affected by these patch notes the third and final one i'll talk about is the zenith jug um if you're not familiar with the Xanth Jug, I've played it. Um, oh, well, maybe not. Okay, well we're gonna we're gonna come back. I've had this window minimized for a while. Well, okay, we're gone. The Xanth Jug is insanely strong. Um, I've been just crushing 5k delve with it. It it does like 600 mil DPS, and it's tankier than Mana Forged Arrows. It you know. It leaves slams in 0.19 seconds. It can cross the whole map in like five seconds. It's it's one of the best all-arounder builds I've ever played. It's probably my plan for going into 325. Um, it just it has the least weaknesses of any build I've ever played. But this build, once again, gets its damage from scaling spell damage, in this case with strength stacking Iron Will and Iron Fortress, and then trying to turn that spell damage into attack damage with Battle Mage Cry. There is a difference on this one, however, because the other builds, Mjolnir and Mana Forge Arrows, both rely on Indigon. This build does not. Um, it can use any helmet. I use a rare helmet. And, you know, if I if I search my character right now, I've got this helmet on. It's just a pile of stats. It's not required. It's cool, but I don't need this helmet. So I would say this uh, this build is very much alive uh, because this helmet exists. It's an old one. You might have to you might have to jog your memory from years past, but there's a helmet called Crown of Eyes that effectively gives you a zero Warcry effect, or full 100% Warcry power, but like no added extra Warcry effect. Battle Mage's Cry, but it's just always up. At all times. So you don't have to weapon swap in Warcry, which is something that a lot of people hated. It was, like, for some people that was disqualifying because they want to play, you know, a minimal button, minimal input build and just be powerful and don't have to, like, weapon swap. So for some people, honestly, this is a this is a positive change. But my plan going forward is to modify the Zenith Jug with Crown of Eyes to not use Battle Mage's Cry. Uh, and you might think, well, you had Warcry power before, so you've lost a little bit of damage, right? Well, uh, let's not, not really. Because one of the changes they made this league was they got rid of totems. So there's, you know, Ancestral Protector, Ancestral War Chief, Vol Ancestral War Chief. There's ways to scale totem buff effect. All these things got removed from the game. In fact, a lot of things this patch got just removed from the game. There wasn't really much attempt to dabble or balance. They just removed them from the game. So instead, what they did is they took a lot of melee skills and buffed them by around 75% on average. It wasn't 75% across the board. Some skills that were already overperforming, like Bone Shatter, got only about a 35% buff. So I'm sure people will even argue that Bone Shatter got nerfed because, like, they'll do the math on, like, oh, if you had all these totems up, it was actually better before. So, like, you know, overperforming skills like Bone Shatter were maybe on the underside of buffs that, like, even arguably could be slightly weaker on, like, some perfect totem situation than before. But some skills got more than that. This skill in particular went to 239 effectiveness from 130, which is an 84% buff on a build that had not really a use for an 84% buff. So I lost a little bit of Warcry effect and some helmet mods for Zenith. But just the damage gain from the melee changes they've made is going to actually just completely outpace that. Because not only do I get 84% damage here, they reworked Rage to be more damage multiplier. Before it was just increased attack speed, which on a build that uses Undeniable and has crazy amounts of attack speed is not very much. 
just because of diminishing returns. But they reworked Rage to now be more damage. Um, so you can get up to 30 Rage baseline. It's really easy to get a 30 Rage now. You can gain Rage faster. So now my builds will just have, or my Zenith build will just have 30% more damage. So, uh, yeah, we're already, you know, even if I lost like 50% damage from, uh, you know, like Warcry effect, like I'm still, I'm still ahead by a lot. So th that's the summary for ways builds I was considering playing would be impacted by the changes. Uh, and now I'm just going to go through some of the major, like, endgame balance changes that affect a number of builds. So, let's just go to the first one, Adorned. Alright, Adorned is a huge part of the game in the current meta, in the endgame, in the mid-game even. I wouldn't even say it's a endgame item. A lot of builds this league could just slap on, like, a 2 Divine Adorned that was, like, a 108 roll. And just put on, like, 4 or 5, like, no implicit magic jewels that just have, like, the right 2 stats. And it's already better than whatever they were doing for a similar budget. Um, this kind of took over a lot of builds just because of the efficiency of the way it scales. Uh, I was, I'll admit, I was wrong on this. I thought we'd get one more league of this, but I was wrong. They, they nerfed this league after two leagues. Um, so Adorn is now 0 to 100%. There are some builds that can use it at 100% and still be strong. But the thing is... The few builds that exist that will use that at 100% are having to compete for a 1 in 101 four-piece turn-in when nobody's delving because delving's garbage money this league now. So these might still be a ton of money. It Right now it's like over a mirror, which is like 1,500 divines for Perfect Adorned. But it's the same odds to get a current Perfect Adorned with 100. And that's going to be a breakpoint for a lot of things with rounding. There's the new jewels that give plus one max res for a certain type that could be plus two with 100, but not with a 99. So the difference between a 99 and a 100 might be like 30 div versus 300 div. And the power at a 100% for most builds is not going to be worth doing that. So even if people are sitting here doing the math like, oh, it's still 100, that's four RMR instead of two. It's like realistically no realistically the best adorn you're going to be getting is like a 90 to a 99 and so if something doesn't hit a rounding point at 90 to 99 i wouldn't really plan on it unless you're one of someone who's like so locked in on a certain build that needs this that you're going to fork over like a small fortune for a 100 do not just look at it and say because it can roll a 100 perfect that you're going to have 100 unless you are aware that you're spending several hundred divines still so for the most part, I would say for 95% of builds that use Adorn in this league, it is removed from the game. It is gone. It's out of here. A couple other notable uniques that got nerfed that were really, really prevalent in the meta. Defiance Destiny. In softcore, you know what? You know a, you know a defensive-oriented unique is good when people are running it in softcore. Defiance Destiny is just so good for content that's just like juice content with 100 monsters surrounding you, all attacking you. If you're a life-based build and you want to fight 1,000 monsters on your screen at once and not die, this is immortality in a necklace. Um, it is now nerfed from 35 to 20 at the maximum roll, so it was 75% more recovery before. This is not destructive to it. I would say people will still run this, and I would say this is still a good item. I would say maybe the change would be that now it is still, like, insanely good for hardcore. But maybe less softcore builds will run this now. Um, it's still good, but, like, that's a, that's a sizable nerf. Um, there's, a, there's a number of other nerfs in these patch notes that are affecting something super endgame. One of them is um, Defensive Ores. So, Grace got a flat nerf of 40%. Determination got a flat nerf of 50%. Oh. So, 50% are all gem levels. Now, those affect a lot of builds, but the power's been shifted more to items. So, if you were a build before that just wore a bunch of cloth armor and ran Determination for flat, you're going to see a lot less armor now. But if you were a build before that actually had a lot of like high armor pieces, you might actually even be ahead. 
Uh, but I would say overall across the board, it's a slight nerf. Uh, the big one I would say is Fizz to Ellie has been gutted. Like they didn't touch lightning coil, but like lethal pride mod gone. Uh, a lot of craft mods gone. The delve helmets gone. I think the Eldritch Implicits, gone. The Benchcraft mods, gone. The Watcher's Eye mods. The Purity of Elements, Purity of Lightning, Purity of Fire, Purity of Ice, gone. And the reason that's a big deal in terms of like super endgame balance too is that kills Armor Stacker. Armor Stacker runs Transcendence, which means it has no armor to Fizz damage. Which means they need to get 100 Fizz damage taken as Ellie. So that they only take elemental damage from hits. And then they have, you know, Transcendence with a million armor. Well, with all of these sources gone, there's no more 100 Fizz to Ellie. So, like, Armor Stacker just fundamentally doesn't work if you only have, like, 70 Fizz to Ellie. Because that means you'll take 99% reduced damage against 70% of your incoming damage. And you'll take full damage, zero reduction, against the remaining 30%. So the difference between having 100 Fizz to Ellie and 70 Fizz to Ellie with a 99% reduction on Ellie is you now take 30 times as much damage as before. Because you took 1% damage before. Now you're taking 30.7. So, yeah. This kills Armor Stacker. They have half as much armor as before with the Grace Determination nerf. And they cannot get 100 Fizz to Ellie in, in League. Maybe in Standard. Um, so armor stacker's dead, but this does have wider implications for a lot of builds because honestly, one of the most effective ways to defend against physical attacks has been for a long time, Fizz to Ellie. It even makes armor more effective. If you take less of your damage as physical and, and shift some of it into elemental, not only do you get us take that damage and apply max res to it and take significantly reduced damage, but it lowers the portion that's Fizz, which makes armor more effective as a percentage. So for leagues now, Fizz to Ellie has been the dominant defense against Fizz damage, even though you might think like, oh, just slap on the termination. Especially in end game on really big hits, pretty much every like competent tanky build either has some form of Fizz to Ellie, or it's an energy shield build with 20,000 energy shield. There's really not an in-between for tanky endgame builds it's those two options so this does have a pretty big uh, effect on like what's the most efficient of farming like super hard endgame really all that's left for good fizz to ellie is like you know a lightning coil build with decent life but they're not going to get 100 percent anymore they're not going to be like lightning coil with like double purity watcher's eye getting like near 100 percent with then then they have a helmet mod and a helmet craft and now they're at 95 from three items they're going to just have their 50 from their lightning coil. And they're still going to have to do something about the other 50%. So, yeah. That's honestly a pretty big shakeup for defensive meta. But a couple other things got changed. Um, Combs Heart. I don't know if it's in this patch note. They teased it. Is back to Legacy. Honestly, I don't think this is like... It's, it's a cool thing for people who played back in the day. To see it return to its glory but there's just been enough power creep this isn't even going to be good like th this this i i'll i'll declare it some righteous fire character will use this i get it but in terms of like end game power this is power crept out it's it's not a significant enough change uh it's too little too late two years ago this might have still done something but it's it's just too crept out now um as far as like maybe other super impactful stuff to the game we did have the teaser. We are getting an auction house. If you missed this, this is big news. If you've ever played a softcore trade league and you've measured and you've messaged 200 people for orbs of annulment, and then the trade website tells you you've messaged too many people. You can't message anyone now. Take a 10 minute break. Yeah, finally that happened to Mark, and now we have an auction house. So, um,. To all you people that would not sell Mark oils or catalysts or whatever he was trying to buy, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Because now we have an auction house. Uh, and it looks, it look, I'm guessing it's basically going to function like the way the, the trade website does, 
where you know you basically are, are going to have the bulk item exchange and you're basically just going to select what i have what i want there's the drop downs they're really similar they have the same tabs here it's it should effectively function the same as the site except skip the trade friction and just do the trade instantly the difference is there's a gold cost if you've seen poe2 content you'll know they're adding gold not as a way to trade items between players but as a trade consumption currency of the cost of the trade so you i can trade my chaos orbs for a divine and i can do it with the auction house if i pay some gold that's just my currency i accumulate from killing monsters so this is maybe going to be a big hit to some hideout warriors they're going to have to hire some servants to do gold trading for them because they don't kill any monsters. I'm here for that. I, I am waiting for the complaints of the hideout warriors that don't have any monster kills. Because uh, I'm going to be drowning in gold and making instant trades because I'm going to be killing monsters. But I think this is really good for the game. This is one of a number of changes that's getting added to 325 that has been initially teased for PoE 2. Um, to the point where there's so many of these changes that were in the announcement today, like gold, like auction house, some of the melee changes, that people are starting to call this uh, PUE 1.5. So uh, the game has shifted a lot more toward what PUE 2's announcements have been just in the last 24 hours. So I think it honestly is fair to call this patch Path of Exile 1.5. There's, there's a number of changes like this where you, if you've been following the news, you're going to see in the coming league things that you thought you weren't going to see until PoE 2. And that includes graphically. A lot of the graphics are, well, maybe that wasn't the best example. Like, they just look better than the things you're used to seeing. Like, the detail's just higher. Like, I mean, these aren't even, like, good examples, but, like, the character models, the building models, they're, they're, they look a lot more PoE 2. We do get a little bar of power from this league. Um, there's... Hang on, let me see if I can find it. There's some enchants for bar of power. Uh, some of the... Every single one of these looks absolutely busted, so this will have some big, like, endgame impacts. Projectiles return to you. Instant leech. Replica headhunter. Keystones. Plus one cur... Like, these are insane. Even if you only get one of these to craft on a weapon, these are build-defining, meta-altering, double damage. Like, th th this is a pretty, like, good quality of life, yet insane borrowed power bench right here. It's just, like, it's kind of like uh, Sanctum Relics, where you could just, like, put a keystone on your relic. Like, yeah, you had to do the League Mechanic to get it. You made paid, might have paid some money to someone who farmed it. But it just, like, can fill some gap in your build with, like, a craft and some money. Like, that... I like that style. Maybe some people don't. Maybe some people want to do some convoluted necropolis crafting. But, like, to me, this is fine. Just make these hard. Make... You have to, you know, kill some pirate boss, whatever. I don't care how you get these. I don't care if you can get, like, one per day farming. Whatever. This is fine. Um... As far as remaining changes that have, like, end game or, like, you know, game balance impact. Uh, from this trailer, we're getting a lot of uh, the old league mechanics that some of them have very OP crafting. We're getting them back. Recombinators are back. This does impact, like, end game builds because it means there are, like, grasping mail mods that can uh, be recombinated onto bases. We have new higher item level bases, like item level 84 bases. There's like a lordly plate that's 1200 something base armor. Where if you do the math on how much armor that could get to on a perfect craft, it's like six or 7,000. And you could recombinator that plate with the grasping mail mod for percent armor per fire res. And have like a six or 7k armor plate that gives you 1% increased global armor per fire res over cap. Like... There are some nutty items you can make with recombinators, including the new bases in combination. We are also getting Lake, or we're getting Wildwood. They've already teased. We are also getting Lake of Calandra reflections back. I don't know if they, yeah, right here. So, jewelry for rings and amulets, mostly rings, I'd say, because there's some really strong, like, uh, you know, simplex, great wolf type amulets out there that are hard to compete with. 
But like especially rings, there are some Lake of Calandra rings that if you high roll can blow a mirror ring or a helical ring out of the water. So for certain stackers or builds that can use the negative modifiers like increased prod speed flipping to slower prod speed, there are some jewelry pieces from Lake of Calandra that will just re-enable builds, like Dorian's prototype is another example, that will just like re-enable builds to be dominant just on the back of this jewelry. A lot of people didn't play Lake of Calandra fully because they didn't like the Arch Nemesis changes that came with that patch. But if you were someone who actually played Lake of Calandra, you'll know there are some like projectile and just stat stacker builds that came from this jewelry that are insane. Uh, so that honestly has probably the most sleeper meta impact for like end game stacker builds. But uh, there's a couple ascendancy changes as well. One of the big ones, honestly, this this hurt me a little bit, was that uh, Juggernaut got nerfed. Unbreakable is uh, no more. So it's now like armor applies to chaos. And like, yeah, that's cute, but that's not unbreakable. Um, so I, I saw that and I was planning on playing, um, I was planning on playing Juggernaut and I still kind of maybe am, maybe I'll go Chieftain, I don't know, but, uh, here, let me find something here. I, I did earlier for the fun of it. I'm like, how impactful is Unbreakable? My camera's covering it, but this is depth 4,700, or 4,976, so just shy of 5k, I ran a fully modded Harbinger node after doing 19 depth deathless with unbreakable unspect. <laughs> so I actually thought it would have a bigger impact than this, but I did 19 depth deathless into a 5k fully modded Harbinger node with unbreakable just unspect so it is a big nerf depending on the content you're doing but i think i'm gonna probably be my like jug plan might shift the chieftain we'll see but that that is a big like uh that, that is a big change the unbreakable nerf um there's a couple other ascendancy changes glad got totally reworked but i just don't see myself playing that type of build so if you want to play glad maybe look into that more uh for a build that's built for it Dead Eyes got kind of nerfed, and you know who plays Dead Eyes? Uh, Magic Fine characters, and Quan got removed from gear, so that's a double win. Um, there are honestly, there's there's like that's an MF nerf, but like with the sixth map slot on the Atlas, and things like Wildwood coming back, and some of the some of the stuff was buffed, like the Wisp Scarab got moved from 1,000 to 2,000 wisps, so you could have, like, 8k wisps just from scarabs, then get wildwood on your map and get another, like, 10k, and just have, like, an 18k wisp map. Yeah, I'm sure the magic finders will be really missing their quant with 18k wisps. Uh, this might be one of those things where it's, like, there's a couple people complain about nerfs, and they end up making more money than the previous league for, like, the third time in a row. So I'm I'm actually thinking there will be a little more wealth this league than previous, despite the removal of uh, quantity from gear. I'm actually fairly confident in that, but we'll see. Um, there's one other. Well, that that's that's mainly. I'll I'll probably go into more videos entirely on some of these changes. Um, just one build at a time. I'm I'm gonna. I'll probably remake a Mjolnir build, you know, remake a Zenith build. Uh, maybe a couple others will slip in there. We'll see. But if I'm going to go into any more detail, I'll probably make a specific video just for that topic. But this is just kind of like the top level view summary of changes that affect like maybe end game building and balance. Uh, it was a 30,000 word patch note, so it's a lot to digest. There's probably things I even missed, but... That's it for this video. Uh, I'll be going over more detail in coming days. Probably a video every day or two between now and league. So I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.